What time was it when I said 20 minutes? 12.45. Oh, um, <laughs> that's my 20 minutes. Oh my gosh. Hi guys! Welcome! Happy New Year! To Laís and the coach. Yes! Today, why am I holding this like this? I don't know. Today is the first episode of 2021. Yes. And the last episode of 2020. <laughs> Because, just like always, Yesterday. we booked too many things. Yes. And while we wanted to do the show, it just didn't happen yesterday for us. That's right. But, but we're we had here good, now. But we had a good time. Yes. So, cheers to all Hi, of Michelle. you. Cheers. I've got my, There's what is coffee. this? Coffee. I don't know what, I forgot what it's called. It's a uh, number eight Nespresso, <laughs> right? Is it an eight? It is an eight. Costa Rica. And this is also today's pre-workout. Yes, we have a workout plan yeah. after this. Hmm. So ah. we wanted to do our in, in initial goal was to do like a little recap show of 2020. Yesterday. Right. If you were with us on Tuesday, Tuesday we had our final interview of the year. We talked to Brianna and we said that, hey, that we were going to do a recap show. And, and our goal with the recap show was honestly just to kind of like bring forth like all of the things that happened yeah. uh, throughout 2020 mm -hmm. um, and kind of like end the year on that note. And it didn't happen. So, it did not happen. but that was just a few <laughs> hours ago. You know, it, it really yeah, hasn't we been. We can still recap 2020. It's been a week. Yeah. So here we go. We had a list. <laughs> well, my phone's over there. No, we no, like but, but we, ha we had a list of all of the things that we we're going to talk about. Yeah. And Unfortunately, when she started making the list, she started in March with COVID. <laughs> but that wasn't that how was her year started. That was the first thing that came to my mind. I'm like, okay, if I had to talk about 2020, what's the first thing that comes to mind? COVID. Yeah, but that wasn't it. So, that wasn't the beginning of the year. So too. our year started uh, in Tampa, St. Petersburg. Where'd you go? Naples. Naples. She went to the Rachel Hollis conference in Naples. Mm -hmm. Rise? Right, yeah, right. It's right at the beginning of January. It was the With very... Jen. Shout out to Jen. We had such a great time. Jen Holder. <laughs> uh, are you watching the show? Because if you're not, like... I don't see her. Poor attendance on you. I can't see. Um, so she went over to that Rise event, and mm -hmm. it was kind of like what she wanted to do was kickstart the year, right? That, yeah. That and it was the, the first time that I was going to do something not with junior meaning like i was gonna sleep somewhere else yeah right? that was big. you've gone out of town but yeah. i've never gone out of town since i've had junior without junior right so yeah typically if we go somewhere we all go we all go or if, or I'm, go. if I'm going to like a workshop or a seminar or something i'll go um but that was the very first time that she goes by myself like a big girl yeah and uh <laughs> i took charge of the household yeah and uh it was epic mm -hmm. we rocked it 48 hours. <laughs> sure you did. But, uh, and then... That conference was amazing, by the way. If you guys don't know who Rachel Hollis is, you should totally look her up. She's amazing. And then fast forward a couple weeks after that, I left for San Diego. Yes. For what was supposed to be the first of, like, four or five mastermind conferences that I was going to go to. Yep. And when I got to San Diego, uh... The COVID thing was just starting and it was weird because I got to San Diego and some people in the airport were wearing masks. Like, you know, it was we were still in that phase where it was like, in the stuff. news, yeah. but it wasn't dominating. It wasn't news. a pandemic yet. Right. So I got to San Diego for my for my event. I some amazing workouts. I love San Diego. Mm -hmm. Uh I I every time I go out there, like the first thing that I tell her is if if it wasn't for the earthquakes. <laughs> like or my fear of earthquakes, then that would be the place because San Diego is amazing. Yeah. The vibe there. I've is, never been. You know, it's it's the vibe. It's not that they have something that's so different, but it is the vibe. It's so chill. The vibes are real. The vibes are real. <laughs> so fast forward, we came back. Uh, came back. I came back, and a couple days later, Bree turned eighteen, mm -hmm. and we went to celebrate. And that Monday, all shit broke loose. Yeah, the, the world woke 2020 up. 2020 started to happen. The world woke up one day and uh, everything, was different. everything was different. And so began the era of Tiger King. <laughs> <laughs> yes, which we've covered on this show, actually. Yeah, I think when, so then when COVID started, so when COVID started, we decided that we were going to do this show daily. Yes, because we're like, now we're home. Now we're we have all this right, time. We have all this time. 
So we started to do the show daily. We were just honestly just talking about so many different things. Yeah. Uh, but at the moment, Tiger King was like number one Everyone was everywhere. talking about it. And I had zero interest in watching it. <laughs> Me too. Absolutely zero. none. Um, and then some of our friends started watching it. They're like, you got to see this. because Jen Holder it's, again. <laughs> it's, uh, it's, uh, it's not that it was good. It was, it was like. It's a shit show. Yeah. And who like, doesn't love a good shit show when so, you're in quarantine? So we sure enough turned it on, and wow, that was a lot. You can never get but that we back. discovered that there is a whole sector of people that are very different and do very different things. <laughs> um, we considered buying a tiger for because <laughs> then that was the talk. The talk, right? You could buy a tiger for two grand. What I you. found weird is that one of the other things we haven't discussed is 2020 was the year of TikTok, right? Because everyone was quarantined, everyone yes. was doing TikToks. Not just your teenage daughter. Or son anymore. Everybody. All of the moms, all of the adults got to TikToking. Yeah. And we can talk about that in a little bit, but on TikTok, when I entered the black hole trap of TikTok during that time. And if you're not following her, <laughs> go for it. I realized how many people actually do have tigers. Yeah. I'm like, <laughs> what the fuck is this? Like this many people have access to tigers. This many people are not afraid of tigers. What is happening? Anyway, TikTok is a whole other subject, but continue right. on with Tiger about. King Happened. So Tiger King Happened, we watched, I think we watched that whole season. We didn't binge it because it was too much to handle. It was intense. You know, it, it was, was like, I need a break. Um, but we did finish that and, and that was interesting. Mm -hmm. It was uh, definitely a topic of conversation. For sure. Uh, and then we moved on. What was the next thing that we moved on to? This was in like April. Uh, so, as April was, so as April was happening, the... So for us, it was it was like paying attention to the upcoming contest season, right? Yeah. Because that was the first, you know, when, when everything broke out, it was like, oh, you know, 14 days to slow the spread. And everything was supposed to close for, for two weeks. And that first month went by and everything was starting to, like, shut down Worse. long term. And yeah. for us, a lot of the shows that we were planning on attending, starting with that April show in L.A., mm -hmm. was, you know, canceled. canceled. So then we were really at a at a in a weird place because we didn't have answers and nobody did. Nobody had answers. So it's tough to be in that place where no one knows exactly what to say. Funny Cause, though. Because then how do you move forward? But right? we all adjusted so well because I think we're still in that place, right? Where no one really knows what's going on. Most part. I think some of us have just said, you know what, I'm just okay. gonna take hold of whatever I can control yeah, and, and exactly. move forward. Mm -hmm. Um but that that left a lot of the people on our on our prep team like like, all right, am I doing the show? Am I not doing the show? Do I keep? But I will tell you, everyone that I talked to, and I, and I, I think I said it in the last show, do, throughout this whole time, those that were prepping for a show or getting ready for a show will all acknowledge that that was the only thing that they had a, a hold over. Like, 100%. that was the only thing that they had control over. 100%. Making sure that they worked out, making sure that they ate their food. Maybe they didn't have 100% uh confirmation that their show was happening yeah. but they had a hundred percent confirmation that they were still going to move forward so the eating day. the food training like that was a thing that they could hold on to and, and all of them went all in on that and it's funny because you would think that the fact that you didn't know if a show was happening or when it was happening would keep people from actually doing what they needed to do but it really was the opposite it right. really did become the outlet for a lot of people we all i think had to get extremely creative at that same time, we closed the gym, obviously, temporarily. We still had the gym, but we closed classes, right? Well, let's be honest, now that it's all over. So we closed <laughs> the gym. Um, and basically what we did was we couldn't we couldn't hold any classes. Or, or honestly, I held out to the very, very end. Yes. We were open. We stayed open or as long as we, we could. I was open way past any of it. But I said, until I can really get in some trouble, right? Like that there's going to be like a really big fine or, or potential for, for an arrest or something. I'm like, I'm going to stay open and, and that's it. So we held out to the very, very end. And the reason for that is because we truly believe that people weren't focusing on what's truly important, which is your health and right. moving your body, right? It wasn't because of business and it wasn't for any reason other than People shouldn't be stuck in their house if they don't have to just yet. People should move their body. People should clear their mind. People should that just be able to, to be, continue living a healthy lifestyle. And that just happens to be the business that we're in. Right. So so it worked. Anyway, so we held out to the very, very end until they were like, you know, if we catch you open, 
you know, we are going to execute you in your front lawn. <laughs> um, that was that was when I said, I guess we got to close. Oh my God. Um, and we continue, obviously, we continue to work out. Right, we would um, go in there every day. And, so and every so often, we would have incognito underground workouts with, you know, very few people. With a few people that, you know, shared the enthusiastic <laughs> desire to come exercise with us. And uh, a lot of those workouts turned into barbecues right after, you know, because no one was going anywhere. There were so, no restaurants. So we worked out, we grilled some food, and uh, those were Had like some drinks. Those were some good weekends, you know, that that actually turned into a couple good things. And we we even considered like we should do this when we open, you know, <laughs> barbecue and workout on the weekends. Oh my God, yeah, it was fun. It was a good time. It was um, the only thing to do. And then as soon as they gave like a yellow light. That you could open like our doors went right open yeah. like we're back Let's you know yep. uh as soon as uh the execution threat was over God. uh then our doors reopened right away but along along that i will tell all of you that most of what we did before covid started was already remote or virtual or you know internet based or phone based yeah. like that wasn't we've been new, doing that that wasn't while. really new for us no and and we've talked about it a lot that's not really new for anybody any coach you know if you go back like like most recently i guess you know beach body and and p90x and and re- obviously right now peloton is dominating um that space but you could go way way back like the other day i saw uh, a geico commercial with billy blanks Yes, you do. Tybo. Jane Fonda's. No, but you know, you know Tybo. Like that Ty. If you if no, you no, saw no. any infomercial, you know, early nineties, like Tybo was everywhere. It was like a kickboxing workout. Got it. Tybo was everywhere, you know. And then you could go back further. You could go Jane Fonda, Suzanne Summers. You know, there's always been tapes. Uh, six minute abs. You know, eight minute abs. Like there's always been tapes. Yeah. VHS. DVDs. Yeah, working out from There's home is always not new. been something for people to do at home. This, I think, opened up the opportunity for people to be exposed to the possibility of working specifically with a coach that way. Because all you did before is like you would buy the DVD, yeah, throw it on, it. and watch Whatever it. Whatever you felt like, and it you know, it. and it's not like Tony Horton was on the other side saying, "Hey." Linda, I could see that you're not doing anything. Right. You know, or this is the time that you got to work out at that appointment. Right. So, so what we did is we just moved our indoor group classes into a virtual format. And the people that we were coaching for nutrition, we kept coaching the same way. No, nothing really changed. Right. And what we discovered is that, well, number one, that was kind of the direction that we wanted to move in anyway. But what we discovered was that it made it accessible for a lot of people that may have not wanted to drive to our gym. And honestly, like you said... It's been around forever. We've been doing that for a while, right? In terms of doing things online. Um, but 2020 really forced people to, at the very least, explore that possibility. Right. Because there were a lot of people, and honestly, myself included, when I first started competing, I didn't want to do posing coaching online. I wanted somebody True. in person, right? Like, we are used, those of us who are used to doing stuff in person, whether it's in person shopping, right? I was against in person shopping for. No, she can't stop. <laughs> now I can't stop online shopping, but. It, it almost like, you know, you have to experience it. So 2020 made people experience mm-hmm. the virtual coaching, whether it was the nutrition coaching or the classes or whatever the case was. And for some people, that was revolutionary. Like Amazon right. is for me. And for some people, it's like, that's not my thing, right? Like there's right. a lot of different things. But either way, no one had a choice but to try. Right. And that opened up the doors, I think, for a lot of different people, no matter where they are, to and experience that was cool. it. It was so cool. It was very cool. It was one of the like, best things out of 2020, you know, in my opinion. Honestly, on our side, it did make us become better as coaches because we had to, you know, you know, one of the things that I've always said is that I hate a boring workout. So we had to get pretty creative with, you know, our ability to do things remotely with zero equipment because it's not like everyone that we coach has the same stuff either right you know it's not like everyone had this size kettlebell and a trx and that pair of dumbbells and we could just formulate some people didn't have anything some people had a pair of bands and yeah and we made it work you know and interestingly enough when we did get the green yellow light whatever to open back up a lot of people were happier online yeah that was interesting that was you know I think my my thought or what we would talk about is like as soon as things open, like people are gonna like be desperate, be desperate to leave their house and, and they mm-hmm. weren't. Some people weren't ready, right? Because they weren't comfortable. 
Uh, some people were fine, like they were comfortable with it, but they would just, it was more convenient for them to do it at home. Right. So we found a lot of people kind of stayed in, in, in so till this day, we have our Zoom workouts right. live every single day. Here we are, January 1st, 2021. Yes. We had a workout this morning yes, at 10 a.m. 10 a.m. Oh, I forgot to take a picture. <laughs> but anyway, so that was, I think, really, really cool because it's something that came out of that whole thing, right? This whole thing is still happening. But at the same time, it's something we, we've still been able to continue doing. Homeschooling. Providing. Homeschooling happened in 2020. For yeah, those of you who are new to that world. Some people got punched in the <laughs> mouth with staying with their kids 24-7. Yeah. Welcome to our world. I know. It's so funny because I remember seeing those memes at first or posts in different groups like, my kid is home and I'm homeschooling. My, my husband's home all day. Time out. She's in a bunch of mom groups. <laughs> Mom, moms, I know all you moms out there right? are in them too. And I got to tell you, like those groups are really interesting. Like they right. say some interesting things. Cause yeah. she reads it to me sometimes. <laughs> yeah. Um, I actually started a, a group for dads to see if that happened. And I joined a, a dad's group and I got out of it. Yeah. Cause it was consuming my, my feed and, and it was just, it's a lot of it drama. was too much. So I just started my own. But, um, but I did start to see people being like, now my husband's home all day and we're both working <laughs> all day at home together. And now my kids are home and, and I'm like, Everyone's quarantine nightmare is my everyday life because we're home all day. We're not home, but we are. We work from home, right? And we work together. So we do all of that 24-7 together. The kids are homeschooled. Uh, well, Junior now because Bree's done. And it's like those were the choices that we made and the life that we created that to some people when they fell into that. They so I guess maybe like in retrospect, it's probably unfair to say welcome to my world because we chose that. Right, it's no, not no. for everybody, and, you guys. And just like we did not choose to be locked up at home, uh, and they imposed that on us. They imposed, you know, your kids and, and spouses being home. But I will seven. say this. As much as we do the homeschooling thing and the unschooling thing, we personally don't do it. We said it from the start that we were going to hire somebody to get that done, right? right? I do not have patience for that shit. Like, right. this would be a zoo in here if I had to be the one teaching or helping and if I had to follow a very specific thing. Right. So whatever you guys went through with that, I can't even imagine. Yeah. I think it's different than regular Bless you all. <laughs> Bless you all. <laughs> um, and then restaurants open for people to go eat. Mm -hmm. And that was weird because you would call, we called places and it was like, are you guys open? I'm like, yes. <laughs> Uh, can we go sit inside? Yeah. Can you we open? sit inside of your place? That was food? all I wanted to do, you guys. Yes. Because again, we work from home. We homeschool. We had our, our own gym to go work out at. So nothing really changed for us other than we didn't really see people often. Right. Which we missed that. But the restaurant thing was like a that real... That was our thing. That was a, our thing. Like if there's a thing that we have is going out to eat. And that was weird to not have that and to not be able to go anywhere. Like we weren't locked at home. We would walk at the park. We would walk outside, but it's like, do you remember the first restaurant we went to? No, that's so sad. <laughs> I have terrible memory. So we went to we it's, go? uh, the Argentinian deli. Okay. Okay. Place. In Myanmar? Yeah. So we went, uh, were we going tanning? We went tanning. We went tanning. We went tanning because the tanning place was open. <laughs> that was safe. And coincidentally, right next to the place that we would go to, there was a little Argentinian uh, deli slash restaurant, you know, butcher shop. And uh, we had eaten there many times. And then I kind of glanced over and it's like, it says you can eat inside. There's people <laughs> in there. And that was my first outing. We were so excited. Mm -hmm. uh, That's so sad. <laughs> How excited we were. We were like in, inside a new place to order food. Like it it's was crazy. And then that was the that. things that became exciting and then that opened up the floodgates for us to like well let's start calling where else places can we go and see where we could go eat uh, yeah. i remember calling one place remember that italian place we called yeah and they told us uh it was like eight o'clock and they said we have to close at nine because the police come yeah, every night of the curfew uh because of the curfew the right. police come every night and if anyone's here they'll shut us down I was like, yeah there were shit. moments i will say as much as we try mcdonald's to never closed that was that's big. true <laughs> As much as we always try to stay in our bubble, because that's what we enjoy, and as much as we had moments where we watched the news more than others, I will say that there were some moments of this year that literally made me be like, what the fuck is going on? Like, I literally felt like I was in a movie. Like, I never in like, my entire legend. life could have imagined experiencing certain things like a curfew. Or right you know, being locked up in your house or being told you have to close your business or 
being forced to wear Even a mask. Even the parks closed, right? Remember yeah. at the beginning, at the beginning, we're like, all right, so we'll go for a walk in the park. The kids will play. And then they close the parks. You couldn't be outside. And then we went. We, so then we had to walk on the street. And then you had to wear a mask in the street. And they were oh, like, now let's not it. walk in the street because yeah. I'm not going to wear a mask in this heat. Right. I that was hell. It. Yeah, it was interesting. Anyway, so then there was a glimmer of hope. Uh, we're going to watch this show in like 10 years and be like, wow, remember that? Remember That's that? Crazy. People were outside. <laughs> yeah, glimmer uh, of hope. Sorry, there was yeah. a glimmer of hope because the first show that was going to happen was like 70, 80% and it kept like, yes, it's happening. It's in happening Dallas. in Dallas, Texas. Mm -hmm. And we're like, we're there. We're like, we're going <laughs> like. <laughs> I know we haven't been out, but getting on a plane is what's first. Right, so uh, we rallied our team and said, hey, this show is happening. Uh, those of you that were preparing to do that Orlando show a few weeks you know, prior, they've moved, they've canceled that show, but there is a show happening. And some people jumped on board and they're like, we're in, we're going. And we're like, we're going. And we made a trip out of it. Yeah, you we know? did. We went to Focus Dallas. Style. Went to Dallas. We had amazing Tex-Mex. Mm -hmm. Oh, man. Those mm. flying bugs, though, I'm not a fan. Yeah, te Dallas, Ugh. Texas heat is different. It's not yeah. Miami heat. The heat know? and the bugs. Not my thing. That was, uh, but we, we got to Dallas. We had a good time. Uh, we had a good time. We, did, we had an show. outdoor workout with our team in the... Like 110 degree Dallas dry heat, dry heat, heat. Uh, and then um, we did our thing. You know, the the our, our team did great. Uh, they got to experience. All of them were were competing for the first time, so they got to experience a show. Mm -hmm. um, the venue was great. It was inside of a theater in Dallas. Yeah. Uh, I think everything went smooth, and we had an excellent time. Everyone was just happy. And at least, right? I think everybody was happy that at least something happened, yeah. and and they got to participate. Yeah. And and it also gave hope. That, you know, the year is not more. completely done because it was only July. Yeah. You know, in retrospect, it was only July. Yeah. And it gave a little bit of hope that, you know, something was happening. Yeah. And then we came back and, you know, the gym started open a little bit more. And then they closed a little bit and they opened. And, and then I remember one day, like, we were, we were, you know, we did group classes. And people were driving by with their cameras, like, to record us so that they could, you know, what, what seemed like, Report us. Yeah. So then, you know, then we started working out with the door closed. So that, that I mean, it was a mess. And in the Miami heat, that's rough. Right. And it was a mess because you, you know, can't wear a mask you know, during a high intensity workout. It's it's outdoors. nosy neighbors or or nosy people. Like, listen, if, if if we're not bothering you, like, don't worry about what we're doing. And For real. and no one is forced to be here. They, right. They're here taking care of their health. So anyway. Uh, they weren't driving by Walmart saying, look at that line. Because yeah. I drove, uh, Junior wanted, I forgot what toy he wanted. And I'm like, oh, let's go pick it up. And, and, and that, at that time, they were limiting the amount of people that could go in, right? So it was uh, it was like capacity. Mm -hmm. And then when they were full, then the line would start outside. Mm -hmm. And then you had to be six feet apart. And we drove to Walmart one day, and the line was around the building. And people were just standing in line six feet apart waiting to go into all my getting this too. line ross oh ross was weirdest the line. weirdest thing people were lining up outside of so ross like, what do you need so badly we can't go anywhere and they were lining up before it opened yeah that was very strange the toilet paper shortage was very strange the toy last night we were talking to uh to our friends about that very like weird. i still don't understand why the need for so much toilet paper uh and why it came and why it resurrected you know yeah and even that, I was telling him, so this day there's a limit of one napkin pack or one toilet paper. And it's like, I feel like I'm in another planet. Like, that you're limited how much paper you can buy. Like, so anyway, crazy. But we did also go to Universal Studios in July. We did. You know, it was Junior's birthday. We went to Universal. The parks opened here in Florida. And, and as soon as the parks opened, we're like, well, we're there, you know. We actually, you know, it's a funny story because we stayed at a hotel that had, like, a water, water park. park. Mm -hmm. And... Again, there's a bunch of kids and people interacting inside of on a water on top of each other, like going through the same pool and water. Like, and it's those log logistic things that, that are weird for us. But um, that water park was fully open. Then we get to Universal and there were, you know, again, the park was open and there were limits, but we had a good time. A good time. It was hot. It was but hot. We so had hot a good time. to wear a mask. I yeah. said I'm not going back there until so the mask thing is lifted. Right. But so but we did it. We went. We did it. We had a good time. Um, and along the way, I think it was that weekend mm -hmm. that, you know, her and I were chatting and 
for all of you that don't know, when I first moved to Florida via New Jersey, like I made my way down, uh, I lived in Central Florida in Deltona. Um, and I worked in Orlando before I ended up in Miami. So I lived in that Central Florida area initially for almost two years before my 14 year Miami stand, Miami, Miami. <laughs> um, and, and it's funny because Brie asked us if she asked me, she's like, would you ever move back to Central Florida? And I said, hell yeah. Like, and she was like, hell no. Are you crazy? Yeah, I'm like, it's so slow up here. I'm a Miami girl. I've been there my whole life. I like <clears throat> the crazy Miami stuff. I'm used to it. And and as we talked about that a little bit more, and I was like, you know, it's very different in Central Florida, like, you know. For family. For family, for what we do. There's like, so, much, so many things for the kids to do. There's so much space. Uh, I was like, you know, and, and coincidentally, we were in the process of, of moving um, from from where we were. Uh, and the conversation was in the air anyway. And then I said, you know, you should really look to see what we could get in Central Florida for, you know, relatively the same amount of Florida. And, and you'll you'll be same surprised. Right. And I was sold. Just I was like, like that. what? We're moving. So. And sure enough, that, that weekend in July, that conversation flared up and little by little, like we started, you know, making moves, making our moves. Making our moves. And you had been in Miami for 14 years and I've been, been in Miami for 14 for years, 20 years. Mm -hmm. So, and we had so many commitments in Miami from our business, the gym, uh, our team, competitions, you know, there were so many things. Uh, but then as we thought, well, once the lease at the gym is up, are we staying there? Are we looking for a bigger place? Uh, once the competition season is over, what are our next set of moves? And we have so many people on our team from so many different places in the country and even in the world. Right. It, it wasn't really just the Miami team anymore. Uh, 2020 just diversified, I think, our business yeah. so much because now we were online coaching more than ever yeah we have we have clients in la new york chicago texas, texas like everywhere you know and so. now we've we were even outside of the u.s right? right so uh for us it was like well wait a minute like if we're doing all this stuff for people that are anywhere why can't we be anywhere right especially since the gym thing is still iffy meaning like can we open can we not can we not open can we open with x amount of people do we have to close the door right, right? it, it became such a, thing, yes. such a headache and most people were online anyway. So we were like, why can't we make the move that we want to make? Uh, now that a lot of our stuff has really just kind of diversified and become virtual. So, and sure we enough, did. we did. We did. And we packed up our stuff <laughs> and moved to Central Florida. Yes. Uh, coincidentally, uh, our lease was coming to an end. And uh, there were some moves there that you know, we're a little bit questionable and we said, you know what, that's, this is as far as we go. Attendance at the gym was, was minimal. minimal. People were again, still going compared virtually to online, right. compared to the online stuff. And, and it really was a very smooth and easy transition. And it happened faster than we anticipated. It happened a lot faster than we anticipated. We honestly, when we first talked about it, did not plan on making a move until December of yes. 2020. And it was after the show. It was August when we were when we were chatting. It was we talked about it in August to do it in December, mm -hmm. and we ended up doing it in September. In September. The yeah, very next and month. we've been here in Central Florida since September. Yes. Uh, and but we're still business as usual. And business we're as still, usual. We're you still we're still helping a lot of people, everyone that we're helping. Uh, a lot of people knew. A lot of people didn't know. Mm -hmm. uh, for a lot of people. So didn't if you didn't know, people. now you know. Now you know. <laughs> we are in the four oh seven. Yes. Um. And we love it up here. It is absolutely we are not in amazing. Orlando. Right. We are a little outside of Orlando. It is but we absolutely love it. amazing. Uh, yes. I am glad to be back in this area and I am glad that all of them love it. So that was one chapter. Then in that same sentence, I closed the gym. You did. You know, I I've had my boot camps for 14 years. Yep. You know, the very first boot camp was in Coral Gables. And sorry, in the Grove, no, in Brickle. The very first boot camp was in Brickle, and I built that out. We expanded into the Grove, Aventura, um, Pembroke Pines, Miami Lakes, 
Uh, we opened our, our gym in Hialeah. Then we moved that gym to Miami Lakes. Then we moved back to Hialeah. Mm -hmm. You know, so it was a 14 year run of, of having a physical location. Cause even when, when I was doing them outdoors, like we had a place to go to yeah. and just like that, we closed that chapter too. Uh, and not for anything negative because no. you know, we probably had one of our busiest years ever. Yeah. So it wasn't a, Oh my God, like we can't stay open. And, no. no, it wasn't that at all. It, it was, was just, you know, it I was think, a logistics move. And I think sometimes you just know when it's time for a, for a change and for a different chapter. Mm -hmm. And like I said earlier, this year definitely forced everyone to pivot and to shift and to, as business owners to make moves, right. That made sense. And, it didn't make sense anymore to have a physical location mm -hmm. considering everything. Not like you said, not because we weren't busy or not because we couldn't just because when you, when you stop, you have to stop and analyze your life very often. Yeah. And when you stop to analyze it, you're like, okay, I don't know that this is really like the thing that we should be doing right now. Right. Because you only have a certain amount of time and energy and focus that you can put into things. And when it started to seem like, holding on to that specific chapter was taking away from other things that people were needing because we're right. in the, we're in the service <clears throat> industry where you're here to service people and change their life through, you know, fitness and nutrition. And so it started to seem like we were being pulled in different directions. And right. after a lot of talks, I know it wasn't easy for you because that's been a part of you for a lot longer than I've ever known you. Mm -hmm. So it definitely was a chapter closed, but it did feel good. Like it oh, didn't great. feel like it was a bad thing. Right. It wasn't like, Oh my God, I can't believe we have yeah, to do this. It exactly. was like, Oh my God, I can't be believe we get to do this. Yes. Um, and a lot of people that a lot of people have reached out and asked if I'm going to open another gym. And the answer is yes, but not until like, I don't have to deal with any nonsense. Mm -hmm. Like I honestly don't want to start a new venture of, opening a physical location and Under deal with guidelines. so much red tape. Like that isn't what I want to do. Like we don't need to do it. Um, because we, again, we had transitioned to so much remote and virtual coaching, um, that when we do open the gym, it's going to be because it's something that we want to do. Mm -hmm. Uh, and I don't want it to be under, under any like controlled situations. Uh, I, I'd rather just wait. It becomes so much more yeah. of a headache than it's you worth. And we love, we love the gym. Yeah. And we love being there and we love yeah. what it did for a lot of people. Yeah. Um, and we want to do that again, you know, yeah. but we don't want to be restricted in how we do it. And when we do it, it will be up this way. Yeah. In Central sure. Florida. For sure. So, so those, those are there, those announcements. <laughs> <laughs> Glad we got that out in, in the open. Um, what else? So we did that show and then all the other shows got canceled for the rest of the season, except the show in Miami that just well, happened. Atlanta happened too. Oh, Atlanta. A couple weeks before. Uh, but everything kind of got filtered into that final show in that Miami. Final show in Miami. Um, and it was, it was an amazing epic. experience. It was you know, epic. our team showed up and they did great. There were some logistical things because then that show got moved to the weekend of Thanksgiving, so not everybody could participate. Yeah, some of our um, team members couldn't. But it was an epic weekend. It really it was, was. It was what a way to close the season. Uh, shout out to, you know, the WBFF for yes. putting on an amazing show. Amazing. Uh, it, it really did give everybody like a breath of fresh air because the show was so great. And honestly, like everyone left looking forward to this 2021 season. And this morning they announced the 2021 full schedule. So the entire Ooh. schedule for the 2021 season is up. We are going to be at a lot of shows. A lot of them starting here in the Orlando area in April. Uh, and then there's another show in Orlando that we'll be at. We'll be in Dallas. We'll be in Las Vegas. Uh, I sound like we're on tour. We, <laughs> we are, are on tour. Uh, we'll be in Las we're Vegas. We're in the WBFF world tour. Yeah. Um, uh, we'll be back in Miami toward the end of the year in Atlantic City to close the year out. We will am, be there. I am really looking forward to going back to AC this year. Me too. Uh, and kind of closing our year out. Like last year, that's what we did. We, uh, she competed in Atlantic City. And right after that, we drove up and we got a, a cool in Airbnb in, in Jersey City. Mm -hmm. And we ate in Hoboken. We were we in spent Times a week Square. We in between New York and New yeah. Jersey. We took the train amazing. into the city. We had pizza at Famous Rays and Original Rays. And 
We walked up and down Times Square. Um, it was it was a really cool way to end the year, and it was so cool that we left there and saying next year we got to bring more people. <laughs> <laughs> the goal is the goal last year in 2020 was to do that, but obviously that right. was not possible. So I am really ho and we had an amazing. Um, Christmas and New Year's just here where we are. But yes. I'm hoping that this year in 2021, we can finish the year again in Atlantic City and in New York. Yes. So cheers to that. Yes. Um, above all else, I think that this year, most people hopefully discovered that your health is a priority. You know, no matter what your views are personally on this situation, uh, it did expose that we are all very fragile. You know, I've learned that firsthand, yeah. um, but we are all very fragile and your health is a priority. And this vessel, this body that you get to live this life has to be taken care of. Mm -hmm. And, you know, unfortunately, it's something that I've known for a long time. People take better care of a lot of other things. As I'm looking outside, like I see our neighbor's grass and their cars and you know, one of the observations that I make now that we live in, in, you know, like more of a suburban areas, you know, people are outside on the weekend and they're washing their car and I see people mowing their lawn and taking great care of these exterior, you know, parts of their house. Um, and at the same time, I'm, I wonder, I'm like, are you taking that much care of yourself? Yeah. You know, because all that effort to take care of your lawn and, you know, if you're eating like crap and you're not moving your body in a way that makes it feel well, then the hell's the point? Because everyone understands that. Like, conceptually, I think everyone understands that you have to take care of things. Mm -hmm. People take care of their dogs and their kids and their house and their car, right? Like, you have to take care of things for them to stay functioning the right way. But nothing can happen if your vessel, like you said, if your body right. isn't healthy. You know, it's, it's the most interesting of conversations because I, I say it to people. When, when we're chatting, you know, when I'm chatting with a potential client, I'm like, you know, you want to show up for your kids, you want to show up for your spouse, you want to go to work, all those things are important. But guess what? If you don't, if you're not there, then you're not showing up, yeah. you know, and if you're barely taking care of yourself, then you're showing up like that. Yeah. That means that you're half-assing how you show up with your kids mm -hmm. and your spouse and at work. If you are not taking care of the engine that gets you there. Yeah. Um, I mean, that's, that's what, I, that's what I've been saying for decades now yeah um and i know that this year that may not have been the message that they were blasting in your face but it is definitely the thing that we are blasting in your face <laughs> that hopefully a lot of people took from this you know because it, it i mean it, it is what it is you know your health we're is all, all human that's all you have we're you all have human it. and if you don't have your health you know and that's the other thing too you know like another thing that came out of 2020 was the fact that we don't have a lot of control over a lot of things right. whether it be politics whether it be social things that are going on uh you know presidential stuff rules how many of you discovered laws. that your city manager who's not elected actually has more influence over what decisions are made right. than everybody that you elect or like <laughs> the you know the mayor is the one that makes the calls not the president, <laughs> you know. You know what was interesting? It's like, what is and, and again, like like we don't talk politics, and we're not yeah, going to. But I will tell you. For. But I will tell you the city that our gym was in, right? So it was an interesting dynamic to watch the mayor of the county impose a law that the mayor of the city said he was not going to follow, and then. Uh, the mayor of the county say, well, you're going to have to. And then the mayor of the city say, well, the police that work for me are the ones that are going to enforce that law. And I'm going to instruct them not to. It was very interesting to watch. All so of you have the president of the United States, the governor of Florida, and then the mayor of any given city. County. Count, county mayor, first. County and then city. And then city. And it's like, everyone says something, everyone thinks something, and that's fine. But it was like, what a shit show. So, right. and then when it all first started, and I've, I've touched on this and they were like, you know, they're going to shut all the business down. Like they can't do that. No one's <laughs> going to shut down businesses. And I was like, everyone's going to have to wear a mask. I'm like, Oh, please. And next thing you know, we, like we're at target. We can't even find a scarf. <laughs> right. It's like, 
everything that I was like, there's no way. Like, On another it note, happened. Did, have you, any of you noticed like how quick so many businesses popped up? Like we were the, the other day we were in line <laughs> at a uh, home goods at home goods. And like, there were like, how did you get patents for your mask or your special your sanitizer, you know, sanitizer with sanitizer. things like so many businesses yeah. popped up just like that. Yeah. Like, how did you do that so quick? Yeah. But that's what I was getting at. It's like the amount of, the, the, we have such little control of so many things around us. Right. And that's why you have How many people got censored on Instagram? I was talking to someone about that yesterday because they made a post about COVID or about something else, right? And all of a sudden they were either shut down or someone removed the post or all of a sudden no one could see their stuff. And it's honestly, like, guys, listen, it happened to us. Yeah. Like her and I, I, on different occasions, may have said something one way or the other. And all of a sudden, like the things that we track, like. Like how many people are watching stories right. dropped by like less than half. Yeah. All of a sudden from one day to the next. And I was like, holy crap, no one's seeing our stuff. Because anyway, like in my mind, it's like, don't people have bigger things? Aren't there bigger fish out there than whatever the fuck I think about COVID? Right. Right? Like, don't you have like pedophiles to go chase after? And over here worrying about what I'm posting. But anyway, even YouTube started censoring stuff. So it made me realize that we have very, very little control of honestly most things. But that just means to me that the things that we do have control over, we have to control that much harder. Right. And it, with when I say control, I don't mean it in a negative way. You have control over what you can do for your health. You don't mm -hmm. even necessarily have control over your health because you had a problem with your health right. and you didn't create it. Right. Right. So we still never know. Tomorrow is not promised what right. happens or doesn't. But you have control of how you show up for your health, for yourself, for your family, for the dreams that you have, for the goals that you have. So in a year like this year, if anything, like how not able to control anything we were instead of focusing on that focusing on okay so then the things i can control i'm gonna fucking be a beast mm -hmm. at controlling those things and i think that that's the difference maker and i think that that's why we can reach the end of 2020 and say it was one of the best years of our lives yep. because yes there was tragedy tragedy and there were a lot of fucked up things that happened this year not just from covid just in general right in general. this the world was disrupted in many ways this year and that sucks but then what can i can control how big and hard am I going to go in on the things that I can? And we did. And we made some serious lemonade. And I really hope that you guys watching did too. And if you didn't, then approach 2021 that way. Because that's all we Honestly, can do. Honestly, approach today that way. Approach right. tomorrow that way. You, you know, you don't need a new year to turn around whatever situation you're in. All you need is a decision, right? And, and like Tony Robbins says, you know, it's, it's in those moments of decision that your destiny is shaped, yes. but you just have to make them. Yes. Over and over. And you have to decide every day because some days it's easier to decide or to act on your decision than mm -hmm. others. But today is a day where, you know, we have a shit ton of things to do. Yes. And, uh, she's releasing a cookbook today. Yes. Uh, and we have deadlines and I have. As you can imagine, there's a bunch of people that are starting their process and their journey. There's a bunch of people continuing their process. So I have a ton of work to do, but we got to go work out yep. and we have to do it. It's a must for us. Mm -hmm. It's not a, we should, it's not a, today's the first day of the year mm -hmm. uh, because easily it's Friday. How many people are like, well, it's Friday, start Monday. you know what? Then tomorrow's Saturday and I'll forget it. I'll just Don't start on song. Monday. To me, it's Friday. And Saturday and Sunday, it's like, well, by the time Monday rolls around, I'm three days into this new year with, you know, whatever amount of workouts I can get. Yeah. So it's a must, right, for us. It's not a should or an if or if I could. And it's not always easy. It's not. You know, contrary to what people think. It's easy for them. That's what they do. It's not always easy. There are plenty of days where it's hard to do it because we are so busy or because we are tired, right? But before, one of the things that we discussed this morning is before we embark on our next set of tasks which, which we have lots of them today right, like this laptop <laughs> i can easily sit down and not look up until 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 10 o'clock at night and before i get that done before i start on that let me go take care of me first because um, there are no there there's going to be no work being done if you're not okay exactly so exactly. so um as we wrap up the show today our wish for all of you is to have an amazing 2021, um, yes. whatever that might mean for you, yes. you know, I hope it's full of peace and joy and adventures and accomplishments and, accomplishments and, and whatever Health. awesome things it is that, that you want for you, uh, because you deserve it. Absolutely. You know, 
And if you are watching this on YouTube, uh, make this the year that you start commenting. <laughs> <laughs> We'd love to hear from Comment, you. Comment, <laughs> share, ask questions. If you're listening yes. on Spotify, SoundCloud, iTunes, or iHeartRadio, um, I think that there's something with ratings. Oh, yeah. Rate the show. I don't know anything about this stuff. That's all that I isn't mean. why we do this. I just show up and chat. Yeah. That is certainly not why <laughs> we do this. Why. We like to chat. Uh, we look forward to more interviews this year. Yes. Um, we are going to have not only the, the people that we coach on the show, but we're going to have more people on the mm -hmm. show. Um, because that's why we started. We wanted to have the ability to talk about fitness and health and all those things. But we wanted to talk about other things too. Yep. You know, because that's how life is, right? There's, there's not just one thing. So exactly. we look forward to more guests. We look forward to more shows. Um, and that's all we got. Yeah. Peace Have out, everybody. Great 2021.